Hello everyone and welcome back to Cause Streams TV. I'm Cause and today we are asking the question, is it the end? The end of what? Well, that's the real question. Is it is it the end? Is it the end of me playing Mop Remix? Is it the end of me enjoying retail? Is it the end of the season? That's the real question. But in reality, no. No, it's not. It absolutely is not the end of me finishing my journey in Mop Remix. It's not the end of me playing more retail because honestly, I am still enjoying every bit of this game, especially Mop Remix right now. But why did I say it's the end? Well, because it is the end of my Death Knight leveling journey. Last week, I was 445 and I managed to finally get up to 476. This was a huge jump and it's over. I don't have to do any more dailies if I don't want to, but I do do them anyway for the bronze and for the caches, for the bronze and for the spools because it's still totally worth it the dk just continues to get more and more powerful i can get basically solo any normal raid and i've been doing heroics which have just been an absolute blast we've made full groups of 476 and just we've blasted siege of orgrimmar heart of fear mogashan vaults throne of thunder we've done it all something i like to do when doing these heroic ones and forming my own groups i actually like to bring in one or two carries depending on how many 476s i have usually if i have eight 476s i will bring in two fresh 70s who are like 200 item level just to help them out because somebody did it for me and i've been doing it for other people i think what i'm also going to start doing is mythic carries as soon as i get it done on my dk but that's what we did on the dk we did all of our heroics for a couple days straight we continue to do our dailies and then just on the side because i was a little tired of continuously doing all of the raids and the dailies i decided to run around and do some quests mainly finishing the landfall campaign gives you the class apparel unlocks for all of the different classes which i was locked out of so i have gone and completed the achievement now my main focus while collecting bronze on all of my characters is mainly just to finish off buying the class apparel sets i don't have as well as the lfr sets so the dk is in a good place i want to continue getting him stronger he's at 9.3 million health i want to get that up to like 20 and just be able to go into a heroic and be top damage as a tank because it has been very very fun let's do a quick cloak comparison to what we had last week and what we have this week so on the dk on the left you see our old cloak at 10,000 strength 45,000 stamina 9,000 crit and 10,000 haste etc and then on the right side we're looking at this week's cloak once again we got about 5,000 more strength 20,000 more stamina 3,000 more crit 5,000 more leech 5,000 more haste a thousand more leech, four thousand more mastery, and another thousand speed, and three thousand versatility. It's just, the the new changes to the threads and the caches. This is it. I still think that was a win for Blizzard. It has made grinding out the cloak power so much fun. I'm starting to feel like I'm like I was a frog farmer at one point. That's how powerful my DK is. So next up, let's talk about the Ret Paladin on Mop Remix a little bit. I was able to finish purchasing all of the Heroic, Mythic, and Normal Dungeon Apparel that I wanted for Transmogs. So with all of that being done, I started to accumulate a lot of Bronze, and I wasn't really doing anything with it. So I thought, you know what? I still enjoy playing the Paladin, and let's see what he can do. So my brother, being the G that he is, he runs the channel Wowaholics101. There's a link in the description below. Check him out. He asked if I wanted a, a Mythic Siege of Orgrimmar carry, and who am I? To, to refuse taking a mythic carry so i took the carry we did mythic siege of orgrimmar and i managed to get some epic gear on my paladin and replace his greens most of his blues and it was really neat to be able to go in there i survived most of the fights i was very careful we can do some really cool str strats of just stacking every everything up popping life storm and just nuking these bosses it was incredible uh, for the first time ever, I actually got to see the secret phase for Garrosh Hellscream. I've never seen it. In the years I've played this game since Mopper was leaked, I've never actually gone back to kill Garrosh on Mythic, so I've never seen that phase. So for the first time ever, I got to go in there and see the phase. It only lasted a few seconds, but I was there. So once we got to that, I kind of still continued doing my dailies on the Paladin, but then I jumped into actually leveling his gear. Now that I've got some epic pieces, why not? So I started using all the bronze I've accumulated and I've started upgrading his gear. We've gone from 346 to 378 and I plan on continuing to play the Rip Pally because he has been, she has been a lot of fun to smash through some of these dungeons. I'm now running normal dungeons and I'm basically the tank running in the ads and just, just killing everything myself i'm no longer waiting for the tank i am just doing it it has been a lot of fun playing the rat paladin and i really want to play it some more 
And do you guys remember me, we little level 30 warlock that I had last week? Yeah, he's no longer level 30. I managed to get him to 70, but I failed at the mailbox trick that I was talking about last week. So I was talking with other people and I was already level 51 and the weak core that I had still said I shouldn't open the mailbox, which made no sense to me. What do you mean I shouldn't open the mailbox? How can I be level 51 and not go to 70 with how many, how much mail items I have with bonus experience? So I said, you know what? I'm going to go do it anyway. So here we are opening the mailbox. And unfortunately for me, it only got me up to level 65, which actually feels terrible, which means I failed at the mailbox tricks. One of the simplest things ever. The thing that I wasn't doing though, and I started doing this on a new character we're going to talk about in a minute, is I was not running the normal raid for Mogashan Vaults. I actually did LFR. Now in LFR, you don't get the bonus raid token, bonus experience raid tokens. That is something that you need to calculate, which give you more bonus XP in the mail. So I didn't do that. So that was a gap on my part. I did end up going back anyway and finishing the Warlock and getting him up to 70. After the Warlock hit 70, I was sitting on a ton of bronze. Plus you get the 40k bronze from completing the quest for hitting level 70. So I decided, hey, we're now done all of that. I still need some of the world apparel and some of the dungeon apparel. So I took all of the bronze that he had and I just bought all of it. I went through all of the dungeon apparel. I started buying every single piece that I needed until I was completely done. And then I went through all of the world apparel to get all that because I didn't actually want to go and do all of the quests, but I wanted all the transmogs. So that is, an, that is something we did with all our warlocks bronze. And then, of course, I decided to start another character. Because like I said, I uh, this is not the end. This is not the end of me playing Mop Remix. I want to do the mailbox tricks, and I want to get it right for you guys. So I started another character. This one I actually started a while ago with a friend. It was level 27 when I started doing the mailbox trick. It is level 31 now. I do the two dungeons. I do the two scenarios, and I can do normal Mogashan vaults every day. That is going to focus on this guy, and I want to do the mailbox tricks, and I want to get it right this time. So I made Cause Tree Rage, my co my Cult Tyrion Druid. And the reason I made a Cult Tyrion is because I absolutely love the transformation forms for each of the Cult Tyrion different druid forms the guardian druid looks fantastic we also have the feral look the feral cat which i absolutely love and then we have their fl flight form which again is a crazy great looking vulture and then we also have the moonkin nothing special about this i actually have the fire chicken skin so i am going to put that on i do absolutely think that these are some of the coolest looking druid forms in the game and personally this is next to the zandalari druid forms they are the next best ones and i may actually make another zandalari druid on another server just to be able to have those forms if i ever decide to play a druid then i can choose between which one i like best and so why isn't this the end why am I still not bored with Mop Remix? Even after I have a max level character, I started gearing another character, and now I'm le I've leveled another one to 70 and working on another one. Why am I not bored of this yet? And I was thinking about it, here's why. When I was a wee little lad, I found a game called Diablo, and this is basically a dungeon crawler where the whole point of the game is to go acquire loot, get stronger, kill mobs, and get and make it easier and easier to kill the bosses at the end. I ended up playing Diablo 2, Diablo 2 Lord of Destruction, and this just repeated. I have so many hours in that game that to this day, I still play Diablo 2 Resurrected. So why do I like Mop Remix so much? It's because it's like a dungeon crawler, but in World of Warcraft. That's what makes it so great. Heroic bosses fall over, mythic bosses fall over, and as these bosses die, you can continue to gain more power that's what makes mop remix so fun so no i am not done playing mop remix i'm going to get my paladin up to 476 and i'm going to blast through all of the raids and just own it and i think it's a good time to jump in and talk about some retail let's start off by talking about the blood death knight i've realized that i am thoroughly enjoying playing blood once again I'm only doing eights because I really just want the aspect crest to, le to upgrade some of his gear to max max eye level, but I'm still really enjoying it. Now with the legendary, I'm able to do big pulls, but now I do a lot of damage and that's what makes it so much fun to play my blood DK again. Major changes to his gear. Primarily, we upgraded his neck. We were only able to get it up one to 525. We also upgraded a few other things. We upgraded our ring, which we got the seal of Diurna's chosen. We got that up to 525 and we bought this with our boolean we figured we might as well we need the ring anyway we only had a 515 so now we have it, it as a high verse which is critical for us and critical strike win-win overall 
we upgraded our feet we upgraded our belt and then like i said we upgraded our neck so overall the dk is in a much better spot he only went up three item levels he was 522 at the beginning of last week he's now 525.69 hey so just quickly before we jump into opening a vault, I want to point out that I actually got some pretty cool transmogs this week. From collecting the bones from Siege of Wargrimoire in Mop Remix, we got the Tusks of Mamoroth from Garrosh, so we finally bought those, and we have that as a transmog. And then the one other really cool transmog I bought is the headpiece that you see here, the Wrathful Crusader's head. This helm is only available until the end of the season, and from the Black Auction House vendor down below Valdrakin. It's 75k, and I had to buy it because it looks like it's a battering ram plate helm, and I absolutely love it how this helm looks i'm going to make a transmog out of it because it is phenomenal so this helm with with the tusks are going to be my next transmog so stay tuned for that but yeah i was really excited when i got these two new transmogs i think they are fantastic and we're going to take a look at what we got in our death knight's vault we are opening it in on holy spec and let's see what he has i believe he'll have the three mythic raid slots and one no two key slots so let's take a look at what we got we have the Mythic Track Girdle, ooh, with a socket, not bad. Crit Haste, not bad, which is actually preferred over our Mastery and Crit Belt. Moving on out, we have a Mythic Track Headpiece, which we can catalyze, which would give us Crit Mastery. That's actually a pretty good find. We also have the Bone Crusher, which obviously we won't take because we already have the Legendary. Moving on to our Dungeon Vault slots, we have the Mythic Track Shoulders, which we already have. These have Speed and ours have Avoidance. And then we also have the Haste Mastery Neck Piece, which we have a few different necks we can already play with, so I'm definitely not going to be taking this. It's really between taking this Belt Piece or Catalyzing the Head for the Mythic Track. The problem is I don't have enough Aspect Crest to actually upgrade this all the way up to 528. There is definitely more stat upgrades on the helm when I do upgrade it, so I think for now we're going to take this Head Piece, and all that means is I need to run some more 8s to, to get more Aspect Crest. So let's take the Head, and we're going to hang on to it, so that way we can uh, upgrade it to 528 and catalyze it. And next up, we're going to take a look at the Monk. We didn't really do anything on the Monk last week. We just ran a single key for Vault, so let's just quickly open the Vault and see what we get. And the verdict, we have Mythic Track Legs, which we can actually take and catalyze up to 528 because he does have as a ton of Aspects Crest just sitting around, so we're going to do that. And the one thing we did upgrade on the Monk last week is that neck we got. We got it from the Vault last week at 5 uh, Mythic Track, so we upgraded it to 528 and socketed it with all of our gems. And surprise, surprise, we also did manage to get into a key on our red paladin we didn't do it on our own we actually had the gang help us out and we had four people carry my paladin through an eight only at 476 item level but we finally did do a key i ended up surviving it was an eight ruby life pools and i lived through the whole key uh my cheat death trinket proc a couple times but i did live that is the important part right we got through the key and i did some damage i only did about 174k overall but a 476 i don't think that's too bad considering i lived so i am super excited to actually be able to play the, the rep paladin the funny thing is i went from playing the mop remix version of the rep paladin to playing retail rep paladin and the haste difference and speed in using your abilities was so significant it felt extremely slow and laggy that's the best way i can put it, it felt like my paladin was lagging after playing my mop remix paladin and, and it was a struggle of course it doesn't help that i'm only 476 so i'm 50 plus item levels before below where i should be for the season but yeah it was it was all right we got through it we got a decent vault on this guy i'm excited to get his uh, his mythic track piece out of the vault we're going to open it in retribution let's see what we get out of the vault ah super excited this is a lot of fun and we got a mythic track weapon unfortunately for us we need to upgrade our ash candor so i'm not going to take this today so i know i said i wasn't going to take this but i did run a quick sim because i was curious and it's a 10k dps upgrade just for taking the weapon so i'm going to take it for now and then if over time i get enough to upgrade ash candor i'll do that but let's just take this weapon for now 
And that is it for things we have done this week. What is the plan for week 10 of Dragonflight Season 4? Well, this definitely isn't the end. Like I said, I'm still excited and I'm still playing more retail. I want to do more keys on my Rep Paladin. It was really, really fun to play the Rep Paladin and, and actually see that I can do damage and I can live. They feel so tanky, even in such low levels. So I want to see if I can get into some keys and push a little further, get his eye level up. He's only 480 now after that upgrade, but let's see if we can get him up higher. What else am I going to do? Well, obviously, we're going to keep playing Mop Remix because that is still a game mode that i'm having so much fun in i'm gonna go in there i'm gonna blast the mythic raid on my death knight and maybe i'm gonna do some more carries for people i want to take people through heroic help them like i was helped as well and then we're also going to do more in retail most likely i want to continue just kind of pushing out those eights on the death knight try to upgrade his gear as much as possible we have the firak mythic mount farm tuesday nights for raid so we are getting more guildies the mythic mount which i already got on our very first kill so i was super excited for that there's a video on that when i got it down in the description below there's a post release on some of the new affixes coming to mythic plus in the the war within so maybe i'll do a quick review video of that and then lastly we have mythic raid beta testing this thursday and friday and i'm going to jump into that absolutely so there should be a video or two about how those fights feel from a tank perspective depending on how far we get the tuning was significantly challenging when we were doing the heroic one so i'm hoping that we can push a little further mythic to see the phases but i'm looking forward to that that is what my week's looking like i hope you guys have had a fantastic week i hope this isn't the end for you either and you're still enjoying dragon fight and all the different things that have come the different game modes we've had plunderstorm we've had mop remix and we've had season four come out i've been enjoying it it has been a great season i hope you guys have had had fantastic vaults i hope the game is treating you well i hope you're enjoying everything that you do until next week you know this isn't the end but this is the end of the video have a great week everyone peace out also blizzard what the hell is this blizzard what's going on here why is it that every time there's a new patch it's like the weapons on on backs of characters start shifting down or up or just are misaligned but yeah this is the one ash Kander, on a tauren paladin and it's just why is it hanging so far down why is the handle the part that's centered on my back you know we take a look at Feralath, and there's no issue with it it is actually positioned fairly well on a tauren it looks great but then we have the exact same axe on a light forged Draenei, and the center is the actual axe itself with the hilt hanging way out. Why? How is this a thing? And here it is again on a smaller character with a similar axe. Look how much that sticks out from my back. It's like I'm wearing a staff, but it's an axe. And as silly as it looked, you guys actually fixed the polearm transmogs because the polearms used to stick out super far on characters. And look at the monk. This looks great. It's just really weird that how every time you fix one, there's a problem with another. I know this can get resolved. It's just really funny seeing it. The Torin gave it away with the sword. But, I mean, this is looking good. I know Blizzard can get this fixed. Anyway, random rant. and Have a fantastic week. See you, everyone.